Hello, welcome to episode five of live.withcode.uk. Welcome to anyone who's joining us um, for the first time um, and well done for everyone who's taken part in previous activities. Particular well done to Aidan, who's last week's competition winner. You'll receive some live.withcode.uk branded headphones and a little phone stand. Um, if I can confirm your details by email, I'll send that out as soon as I can. Um, just a reminder, each week there are um, four links to a variety of free interactive activities. You can type out the code to improve your accuracy um, and typing speeds. You can work through the codes um, and run it, extend it um, with some suggestions with activity two. The K Pride one is the best way to get um, points if you're joining in the competition. It just tests your code comprehension and builds up your debugging skills particularly. Uh, and then if you're after a little bit more help, a little bit more depth, um, the tutorials is link four. So those are all available on live.withcode.uk or in the description um, of, of YouTube. So I mentioned the competition. Um, just a reminder um, that there's a link on live.withcode.uk to join. If your school is signed up, then there'll be a special class code for you to join in, but you don't need your school to be signed up. Anyone can join in with these competitions. Um, just follow the link, join a competition. It will ask you to create an account. Um, it won't confirm your email address, but if I, if it's not your actual email address, then I won't be able to confirm your details to send out the, the prize if you win. Um, so if you do do that, it just means you've got links to all of the activities. You can get some points, you can see yourself in the scoreboard um, and you can win those prizes. Okay, so thank you to everyone who voted for what to cover this week. The most popular skill was functions, procedures and parameters. So that's what we're going to use today. We're going to use um, and create our own functions um, to make a little Old MacDonald Had a Farm program uh, <laughs> that uses one of the most bizarre um, libraries. I'm not going to write out the code for CowPy, but it's built on something that um, you can use in Linux or on a Raspberry Pi called CowSay, which um, generates a random um, animal using ASCII art and then puts your text in a speech bubble. Um, so we're going to use that for um, today's um, program. Right, let's get started. Remember, live coding means you'll see my mistakes, you'll see the thought processes behind it. You can skip ahead or um, pause the video at any time. And remember, there's a link to the code um, that you can go to uh, to work through the activities. So I'm um, going to start by displaying the lyrics to Old MacDonald Had a Farm. So Old MacDonald um, Had a Farm. E-I-E-I-O, I'm not going to sing it for you. There, we've chosen this nursery rhyme because there's loads of repetition in it. You can use whichever song that you like. Um, and then we're going to say E-I-E-I-O. Um, and then rather than printing each time, we're just going to say lyrics is equal to, and then we're just going to keep on um, adding, uh, concatenating onto the end of it. So lyrics plus equals, it means add on to the end of it. Um, so we have stored all of that data inside a variable called lyrics, but it's not going to do anything until we tell it to. So let's now display it. Sadly, those lyrics are displayed on the same line. So we've got two choices here. We could either try and get a multi-line string. Notice Python doesn't let strings go on multiple lines unless you use triple quotation marks. Um, so that's a bit better. Um, so excuse me while I just write out the lyrics. Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-I-O. And on that farm, he had a cow, um, E-I-E-I-O. Um, skip ahead if you don't want to watch me uh, typing out the lyrics um, with a moo, moo. You should be kind of thinking what gets repeated um, in this, um, uh, in these lyrics here. And oops, and a moo, moo there, here, a moo, there, a moo, everywhere, help. A moo, um, moo, help, can't spell it. And then finally, Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O again. So um, one of the key skills in computer science is generalization or pattern recognition. We're spotting things that get repeated and we want to avoid unnecessary repetition. Why? Because if we make a mistake somewhere um, and it's repeated, then it means you're going to have to change all of the instances of that mistake. We want to keep it as simple as possible so it's easy to maintain and there's fewer opportunities to make mistakes. Imagine if we have lots of um, verses, uh, a cow, a goat, a um, uh, I learned about sea cucumbers yesterday with my six-year-old. That was exciting. So imagine he had a sea cucumber um, on his uh, diversified farm um, plot. No idea what noise they make, if any. Um, but we don't want to have to write out all the code for every single verse. What we do want to do is kind of generalize it so that we can do something clever like um, make the lyrics 
or get verse would be quite good um, for a cow and a cow goes moo and then using the name of the animal and the noise that it makes it would be great if we could adapt all of this so this is where sub programs come in so a sub program is either a procedure or a function um, so you can see here um, how to define a sub program how to call a sub program and that's kind of the main part of what we're looking at today this is our main program at the moment we want to define a subprogram and then call it for each verse that we do. So how do we do that? Well, we define, in Python, def is short for define, um, get uh, verse. This is the identifier, the name of our subprogram that we use when we call it later. Uh, and then everything that belongs inside our get verse functional procedure, our subprogram, is now indented. Um, so now, if we run it, we've got some, um, some errors. When we call getVerse, we need to know what animal it is, and we need to know what noise it makes. Now, strictly speaking, you call these things arguments, um, and you call them up here parameters, but I'm just going to refer to them in both places as parameters, because in most GCSE and um, A-level specs, you just need to know about parameters, um, even though when you call them, strictly speaking, they are arguments, but let's not fall out over it. Um, so we need to know the animal um, name, and we need to know the animal noise. Um, okay, so now we've got a different error. It says lyrics is not defined. Well, we have got a variable called lyrics, but when we try and use it, Python doesn't know what it is um, because this variable is defined inside a subprogram, and this is trying to use it outside. This is a local variable. This is expecting a global variable. Um, for example, at the moment, the um, COVID-19 uh, crisis is a global pandemic. Anyone in any country, if they say COVID-19 or coronavirus, they know what we're talking about. Um, but if we talk about issues just to do with the United Kingdom, if we talk about the Prime Minister or um, the NHS or something like that, that's local to our country. It's the same in programming. You can have stuff that's unique to a particular subprogram um, so that we don't get confused. Uh, um, OK, so if you want to be able to access lyrics, we then need to be able to pass this data out of our subprogram with a return value. So we're going to say return lyrics, and then we can say lyrics equals call this function, generate the lyrics, return them, and save them here. So let's have a look back at here. Um, we call our main program, it just runs in Python. We pass the parameters, so that's which animal and the animal noise to our subprogram. It generates the lyrics and it returns back all of the lyrics to our subprogram, stores it, and then we can display it. OK, so notice I've used the same name lyrics for a local variable as we've used for a global variable. It doesn't have to be the same. We could, could call it song lyrics um, as long as the global variable here matches the global variable here. But it doesn't have to be the same as the local variable up here. All right, OK, so that's the description of how to make your function working. Um, notice before I called it a subprogram. A subprogram can be a procedure or a function. The only difference is a function returns a value. So as soon as you return something back out, this is now a function, not a procedure. OK, um, so Old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on that farm he had a cow. Well, he doesn't have a cow for every single animal because I'd quite like to be able to do this for, uh, let's say, a sheep. Um, so a sheep doesn't go moo any more, it goes ba. But sadly, we've just got cow and cow twice. We don't want that to happen. So instead, I'm going to stop it from being a multi-line string. I'm just going to have single line strings. Put some quotation marks on all of these. Um, pressing home and end to go to the beginning and end of the line. Um, and then we need to concatenate on each string. So plus equals just means concatenate, join on to the end of that string. It's not going to work perfectly yet. You can be predicting what's going to happen when I run it. It's all on one line. We need to put the new line constants on here. So backslash n, backslash n. This just means, excuse me, put a new line onto the end of each of uh, these lines of lyrics. Getting there. Um, but it still only says um, a cow. But what we can do is um, 
instead of literally saying COW cow each time, we can use these parameters. So remember, this data is passed from our main program into our function, and the parameter is kind of treated like a local variable. Um, we can access either cow or sheep by the name of the parameter up here. So on that farm, he had an animal name, um, and that animal says, so we don't want it to say moo every time, we want it to say animal noise. So that's the parameter. Um, so notice sometimes it just says um, the noise once, um, and sometimes it says it twice, which is why I've only put it once in here. So on that farm, he had an animal name um, with a, okay, so let's select moo, replace that with animal noise. Notice you have to have the, um, uh, the quotation marks and the plus to concatenate to join in. This adds the space in. Uh, and another moo, and another moo, and another moo, and two more moos. Excuse me, just muted while I coughed. Here we go. Old MacDonald had a farm, he had a cow, it went moo, um, and a sheep that went bar. We're getting somewhere. Um, so, I said that we'd use the cow pie thing. Um, so uh, I'll give a link to how where you can download this from. Um, it's I didn't write it all. Uh, this version on here has got some um, different animal pictures and some rude ones. So I've adapted and uh, sanitized it down um, to just the, the non-rude ones. Um, it will work if you're using this in idle or get um, a different IDE. Um, then you can just download this Python file, put it in the same folder, the same directory as your other code, and it should work as long as you import um, cowpie here. Okay, so we've imported it. Now, instead of printing it, we can just do cowpie.say instead, and it should choose a different animal and put your lyrics in there. Um, cowpie.say, there we go. So if you wanted to, you could import time, and then you could have time.sleep, um, and I don't know if this is in seconds. Yeah, there we go. Um, so each verse comes up separately. You could maybe have a list of animals that goes through different sounds. Um, everything's possible here. Um, uh, but the idea is this is just a different function. It's just a function that's um, kind of we're using instead of print. Um, you can define your own or you can use ones that are built into Python. So this is a built-in um, function, or you can ones, use ones that are defined in a library or another file. doesn't matter. The idea is uh, when you make your procedures or functions, they allow you to make your code reusable. Uh, they make your code a little bit easier to understand. Um, and uh, it's just more powerful and versatile for reusing in future um, uh, projects. Uh, cowpie.say instead of .saw. Okay, so here are your challenges. Um, so challenges. So you work through these in the kpride activity um, for the um, investigate, or if they just follow link two on the web page. Link number one, add your own verse. Link number two, um, make your own um, cow slash animal using turtle graphics. Um, so follow the previous tutorials if you want to do that. So instead of ASCII art, we've <laughs> got a stegosaurus this time, that's nice. Um, you could draw it using shapes in the turtle graphics. Um, or number three, um, you could um, uh, use loops to iterate through. Sorry, use lists and loops. Um, different animals and noises. That one's a bit more challenging. If you want to learn how to do um, iteration and lists, then just add that as a suggestion on live.wicode.uk um, and we can go through that next week. Fab. Um, so remember, there are links to all of the activities on live.wicode.uk. There um, is all of the links that you need on the web page and um, sign up for the competition, win your prizes. Thanks ever so much for taking part um, and I'll release the, the next video next week. Look after yourselves. See you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.